Religion is big business. They say there are only two certainties in life, paying taxes and death, and religion is exempt from both. Whether they're promising the perfect afterlife in exchange for your tithes or dodging the tax man, it's a circular business plan that works. And so far, no one's come back from the promised afterlife to ask for a refund. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Today, we're looking into 10 of the richest religious organizations and what makes them tick. Number 10, Church of Scientology. If we told you to pay thousands of dollars to have your human flaws absolved by a religion formed by a science fiction writer, we doubt you'd bring out your checkbook without asking a few questions first. But somehow, L. Ron Hubbard managed to get it right. What is even more surprising is he seemed to have it all figured out as a retirement plan from the start. He was famously quoted as saying, you don't get rich writing science fiction. If you want to get rich, you start a religion. And he was right. When he was done writing about aliens in his science fiction books, he started the Church of Scientology in 1952. It was a spin-off from his self-help program called Dianetics. He captured the imaginations of Hollywood elite, and this helped to give his religion credibility and a mass him a fortune. The church has a book value of $1.7 billion and a property portfolio of $1.5 billion, all funded by an annual income of $200 million. The sign-up fees are ludicrous, but they offer you pureness of body and soul if you stick with it. As you pay up, you can move up the ranks of the church, earning you more respect and purity. To reach the highest rank of operating Thetan Level 8 will set you back $256,000. This is the level that actor Tom Cruise has reached. The church spends its money on items like gold bullion, costing $3 million. They made a purchase of a cruise ship at $14.1 million, but it's not all smooth sailing. They've been involved in many scandals and rights violations, including missing wives, child abuse, and alien lizards. It's a real interesting one if you're looking for some bedtime reading. Number 9. Non-Denominational Christianity if you mistake one of these churches for a big budget concert, you wouldn't be alone. The lights, pyrotechnics, staging, stadium seating, and tattooed and bearded rock bands kind of makes it look like you're at a rock show. You can even get a dairy-free flat white and a fresh bagel at the on-site coffee shop at most of these mega churches. Non-denominational Christian churches enjoy all the tax breaks of traditional religions with none of the established rules. While they still rely on a regular tithing to fund their cash flow, they can use it as they see fit, which often includes upgrades to pastors' mega mansions, sports cars, private jets, and yachts. The sky is the limit when it comes to spending God's money. Their members are completely devout and spend most of their spare time occupied with church life and fundraising events. Perhaps keeping their flock too busy to ask questions is part of the business model that works. Number 8. The Church of England When the religion of the time didn't suit him, King Henry VIII founded his own church. The Church of England allowed divorce, and Henry wanted out of his marriage with Catherine of Aragon. Newly single, he realized there is more benefit to owning a church, and the Anglican Church began to grow in size and wealth. Today, the Anglican Church is estimated to own $6.7 billion worth of property and is the largest landowner in England. They rake in hundreds of millions of dollars in income each year through tithe baskets. Now that's a good divorce settlement. And Aluxers, if you want to know some more about one of the most secretive groups on the planet, stick around till the end when we unpack it. Number 7. Hinduism Hinduism is firmly rooted in the belief that abundance and wealth comes as gifts from the gods. In fact, the Hindu gods live in wealth and opulence, and devout Hindus heap gifts of adoration and appreciation of effigies for them. In the U.S. alone, Hindus are the second richest religious body. The Hindu ethos is to be in a constant pursuit of self-realization and self-knowledge, so it's not seen as a system you ever summit. The aim is to find mental and physical wealth through the Hindu religious practices, and with such a large brief, it's a lifelong pursuit. Number 6. Episcopalian When the Church of England members reached North America, they split into several new churches, one of which was the Episcopal Church, which split from the Anglicans when they didn't want to swear allegiance to the British monarch any longer. Today, it's the 14th largest denomination in the U.S., nearly 2 million members strong. 
It's also spread throughout Europe, Taiwan, and Latin America. It is the members of the church itself that make up a part of this list. The members of the Episcopal Church in the U.S. are the wealthiest group of religious believers in the country, so you can imagine how large the amounts are going into the tithe baskets at these churches. Number 5. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Mormons are everywhere. From Finland to Japan, you will find communities from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Sure, there are plenty of gags about Mormons ringing your doorbell trying to recruit you, but clearly this strategy works because Mormons are the fastest growing and one of the wealthiest religions on the planet. Hell, they've even got a musical about them, even though it's from the guys from South Park. Their balance sheets reflect assets of over $30 billion, with an annual income of $6 billion, of which 90% is from member tithes. Members are obliged to give 10% of their entire income. That's the before-tax amount, Deluxers. With a growing membership sitting at over 14 million members, the Mormons have a pretty secure future income. Number 4. Televangelism just when televangelism seemed to be cooling down, COVID-19 breathed new life into the age-old art of scamming old people out of their money in hopes of eternal life. Social distancing meant that in-person churches were closed, and many Christians turned to their TVs for their religious fix. And here, somewhere between TiVo and Tony Robbins, are the murky waters of televangelism, where Christian preachers offer self-help advice loosely based on the Bible. Income is in the form of donations from viewers, advertising sales, and then merchandise. Like a good dealer, the first hit is free. After that, viewers have to cough up more and more for the DVD set, the books, or part two of the talk series. Televangelists are well known for splashy lifestyles of luxury yachts, mansions, stretch hummers, and private jets, all accumulated tax-free under the protection of religious freedom. Televangelism is reported to be a $2.3 billion industry, but that's only what's declared. The real figures are probably much, much bigger. Number 3. Judaism Jewish people are often thought to be wealthy. In fact, we made an entire video about it. Thanks to their great education and generational business knowledge, Jewish people make up a quarter of the 400 wealthiest people in America. The knock-on effect is that given the religious obligatory 10% tithes on a household's income, the Jewish religion is wealthy too. But we won't spill all the Jewish secrets to wealth. Rather, watch the video on YouTube, Why Jewish People Are Rich. Number 2. Islam The Middle East is abundant in oil. It's also the heart of the Islam faith. Because Islam has no laws that condemn the accumulation of wealth, it's a perfect environment to create the second wealthiest religion in the world. Many Middle Eastern country leaders are kings and also Islamic, putting the type of wealth the relatively young faith has accumulated in a different league from those that came before. Islam is also one of the fastest growing religions in the world, with huge growth in Indonesia, South Asia, and Sub-Saharan Africa. 22% of the global population are Muslim. Zakat is the Muslim version of mandatory giving, which is 2.5% of the members' accumulated wealth. This must be used solely for the benefit of the poor, destitute, and others. The Islamic faith has accumulated assets of $3 trillion as of 2020 estimates. This isn't all being banked, though. Of this, $200 billion and $1 trillion is spent to benefit the poor and destitute, and this makes for one of the largest forms of wealth transfer to the poor in existence. Number 1. The Roman Catholic Church The Catholic Church is considered the wealthiest organization in the world. You might even say it's the biggest financial power on the planet. So whatever your thoughts on the religious aspect are, you have to admire the balance sheet. Their operating budget is in the hundreds of billions of dollars, which is far higher than companies like Apple. The Catholic Church's wealth lies in its history. From priceless art pieces to prime tourism real estate, the religion was able to carve out a consistent income that attracts its billions strong membership. On the converse, they have low staffing costs, as upon entering the calling, Catholic priests and nuns take a vow of poverty and don't own anything themselves. Tithing is encouraged by the church's teachings, and if you do the math on a billion members, that's plenty of income to work with. The church's asset figures are hard to come by, but the Vatican itself is flush with assets and security investments deep in the billions of dollars. The figures are shrouded in secrecy, but the sheer size of the church's membership ensures it's always in the green. So Aluxers, what would you do with the extra cash if you didn't have to pay tax? Let us know in the comments. Now, for sticking with us until the end, we owe you a bonus, don't we? 
here it is. Freemasonry is often connected with cloaked men, ritual sacrifice, and drinking from goblets in stone buildings. But is it a cult, religion, or just an old man's networking club? Here are a few facts. Freemasonry began formally in 1717. It aimed to bridge the gap between the religious civil wars that were common in England at the time, between Protestant, Catholic, and Jewish people. Freemasonry is not a religion. There is no clergy or ministers, priests or rabbis, and there are no known rituals. Everyone is their own thinker. The Catholic Church condemns Freemasonry. Since 1738, they've made about 20 public statements against the group and its gathering. Atheists are not welcome. You have to believe. It was formed as a group of men who agree that God is central to their lives and God drives them to do good in their community. So if you were wondering why we didn't include Freemasonry on the list, it's because they're not exactly an official religious organization per se. Until next time, Aluxers, remember to give this video a like and subscribe to see more of our daily videos.